My mother adored opera. My father was involved in poetry. My sister painted. Drive and intensity came from ballet. Once I went to Smith College, I gradually moved away from that into writing. I thrived on the New American Poetry, so you will see a lot of reference to Paulson, Duncan, uh, Ezra Pound. As feminism became a movement in the 70s, I looked for other women artists. H.D. was a close friend of Ezra Pound's, and I began to study her very closely. I basically read everything there was to read by her, and I liked her form of um, these couplets, three-line stanzas, flowing down from a introductory, italicized setting out of the argument here, and began to realize that I could write a long narrative poem, which became Psyche. But of course my form eventually took its own shape as I worked with that poem. And there was free verse, there were dialogues, there was, you know, I was a child of the 60s. But the first part in this first poem is um, about dancing. The studio has a warm smell to it. Heated sweat as though the beads fell on the radiator and were released immediately into the air. Cooking smells of 20 pairs of straining legs. There must have been a romance to it, but was it inside her or did it exist for anyone else? They all came like she did, so others must have believed. Offerings to who? Early learning that one's body was the most sacred and only instrument, the mind totally subservient to the body, the height, the line of the back, the arms. No one spoke of the line of the mind. The mind was to know how to control the rest, how to count music, how to sustain the body when it was finished and folding up. Everything always hurt, a ritual not complete until pain was totally dominating, and not begun until pain had begun. The sacred for me um, is, is basically taking cognizance of the fact that there is something larger influencing us. I loved the ritual of the Episcopalian Church and the communion, but um, not the modern day institution of the church. So in Kabbalah, I found richness, um, the concept of the feminine Shekinah. In Gnosticism, Meister, Eckhart, Dante, Madame Blavatsky, Aleister Crowley, Cocteau, all of these became artistic, spiritual influences. They all wove into my writing, making art become a sacred practice, necessary as breathing for life. North American Indian sand paintings, Australian Aborigine ritual dances. This is called Emu Ritual Dance. The hunters have gigantic headpieces. They feel that way, not the weight of all universe and responsibility, but the seriousness of the catch and the dance. It is not awesome, although their bodies are full of trembling. Their emotions are exact and definite. He is his everyday self, yet he is another with this huge mass. The hunters assume their positions in the bush. The emu man at the water hole, hole lowers himself carefully, each muscle straining. He takes a long, slow drought, then stands upright. A slow shudder convulses his upper body, which shakes all in one piece. He is big, strong, beautiful bird, totally revealed and exalted. I think we are social beings. Webs of desire thread around family, friends, collaborators, the beloved, the muse, the other. Desire is something that runs like a kind of rivulet in through Wild Horses, Wild Dreams. You have a narrator who's continually tucking back into the work, leaving, you know, fantasies and um, attraction to other men or other women, other people aside. Um, and basically those were 
wild years. And these poems give testament, they're a witness of a lot of that kind of thinking. There's writing about parents that I do, my parents, their body, their energy, their critique of me, my arguments with them. There's writing about, a lot of writing about marriage and um, what marriage is, which was definitely something we were trying to figure out in um, these first 20 years of our marriage. So, of course, is the presence of children. And as feminism developed, you know, there was, I had lots of anger and um, yet also a feeling of being tremendously lucky to be able to have these children be able to write about them. This is called dealing. Um, it's a dialogue with a four-year-old. Um, Robin, was his name Robbie then? And so I'll do the parts. Robbie, I will give you a kiss if you give me a bowl of cereal. Lindy, I'll give you a bowl of cereal if you'll let me wash your face. Robbie, I will let you wash my face if you read me a Narnia chapter. Lindy, I'll read you a Narnia chapter if you'll get into your jammies. Robbie, you can spell those gesturing to names Duchamp, Satie, Cage with my letters on the icebox if you will put them back in their alphabet. <laughs> Lindy, you can exorcise out the spirit in my life if I can enjoy the sweet look on your face. That's it. Thank you.